Nicole Hetty, and I'm looking forward to showing you step by step how to create this bold and bright background. I have another uh, tie dye background technique to share with you, and this one uses Copic markers, and you can get a much more vibrant um, color saturation going with this technique. Um, I'm starting out with the R YR12 Copic, and I'm going to make a circle, a little dot of color. Does not have to be perfect, and actually, um, the more rough it is, the more artistic it is, the better your final project will look. Going around the outside of that with a YR18, I'm just making a ring of color around that. I'm following that up with a RV19. And to get some interest going on your background and um, making it look more random, it's a good idea to try to have some of your rings of color go off the page a bit. Okay, so there's one circle. I'm going to repeat the process and I'm going to do another dot over here and I'm going to use the same exact colors and the same exact method and like I said it does not have to be perfect and you can kind of vary the uh, widths of each band of color between the dots. It makes things a little bit more interesting. I'm going to add one more dot down here. And finally, another ring of that pink. Okay, now that I've done that, I've got a small bowl here, here that actually has a rubbing alcohol in it. And I'm going to saturate a little round brush. And I'm going to start from the center of each of these and make a stroke outward. You want your brush pretty saturated when you do this. You don't want to apply the rubbing alcohol lightly. You want it to be a pretty heavy application. And what you'll see is that since these markers are alcohol based, the rubbing alcohol kind of pushes the color aside. So I'm going to go all the way around making these stroke marks. And it takes a few minutes for the rubbing alcohol to take its full effect with pushing the color side. You may want to do two coats for a more dramatic effect, which is what I'm doing here. After you've done that starburst pattern, I liked to go around and just create some little drips or dots in between the widest point of the lines I created right around the edge here. It kind of just adds a little more interest. And I'm going to repeat the same thing with the other dots that I created. And you don't you definitely don't need to be neat about this. And actually, the messier you are, the more artistic it will look. Again, add some dots of color. And if you do it right on the edge of the pink layer, it kind of um, breaks up that solid edge of the circle that you drew. It makes it look a bit more 
random and tie dyed. Some dots. And there you have it. And I'm just going to let this dry a bit before I uh, finish my card. If you want to speed up the drying, uh, you can use a heat gun and then use a clothes iron to iron it flat. Um, or you can just let it air dry underneath the book. It will take probably about an hour or so. To finish up this project, I've got this Hello Friend sentiment from Think Big Favorites number three, and I've inked it up with black ink. And I'm just going to stamp it directly onto the background that I created earlier. Just like so. Now, when you have a background um, that had any kind of liquid or water applied to it, sometimes it can tend to be. Um, just a bit warped even if you put it under a book or something so I just like to make sure to put a little bit of extra adhesive on it especially around the edges so that it will lie nice and flat on my final project I've got a um, raspberry fizz card base and I'm just gonna adhere this right into place And there's the completed card. I hope you enjoyed this fun project. Um, it, it really helps you to reinvent your supplies and get some more uses out of them. I hope you'll give this a try and uh, hopefully in some different color schemes too. I look forward to seeing your results. Thanks for joining me. Mm -hmm.